tonight we are celebrating the 30th year for the Southern Heritage Classic, a Memphis tradition where two historically black universities meet here at the Liberty Bowl for their annual battle. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Alex Coleman. I'm Mary Beth Conley. It is one of the best weekends of the South. I'm telling you what the whole region. We're now giving you tonight an insider's look kind of behind the scenes of all that goes on as we get ready for this epic battle. It's much more than just a football game. Tens of thousands of people come from all over the region. We've got Tennessee State University out of Nashville. They bring their marching bands, the aristocrat of brand bands, and Jackson State University out of Jackson, Mississippi has the sonic boom of the south. We know about them quite well. Oh, yeah. All right, joining us right now is the man who is behind this entire thing, the, the one who has put it together for years, the founder of the Southern Heritage Classic, Mr. Fred Jones. Fred, oh, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Good. Take us back, if you would, 30 years, if you can believe that. What was yeah. the vision then, and what has this classic evolved into? I always thought that if we could put the entertainment with the sports, that we could have a big event. Somewhat like the Super Bowl, that's the, the, the model that we wanted to use, and we have really gotten there, and, and especially from a community standpoint, from a business standpoint, all of that has come forth, and I'm looking forward to the 30th anniversary. Has it even surprised you how big it's gotten, though? <laughs> Yeah, it has. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're an entrepreneur, but this yeah, is... Yeah, you always dream, and I, I think my biggest dream was to be able to do something like this in your hometown, which is always hard. Yeah, And yeah. so that, that's the big plus for me. And to see all those faces, all those Memphians really having a good time. Yeah. Fred, I mean, to, to pull this off, though, I mean, there's got to be so much work that goes on behind the scenes, not only for you, but your entire staff. To pull this off, what does that take, for those who don't know? A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Do you start, like, tomorrow on next yeah, year's it's, game? It's, or... it's a lot of work. It's, it's, you got to bring in a lot of people. I've been very fortunate that I've had volunteers that have worked with us now 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a little bit easier. They've been there, they've done that, they know what to do. And you have a good staff that's been there and being able to pull it off, that's always the, the toughest part, mm -hmm. you know. And it's always a challenge each and every year. There's always something and they're always up to the challenge. After yeah. 30 years, how do you keep it fresh? Every year is different. Every year is a new year. You know, you, you don't carry over anything from last year or from 10 years ago or 30 years ago. You learn from it and you just try to move it forward. I think this year you would probably see a youth movement mm. with the classic. Cool. Yeah, a, a lot of young people to being involved. You've heard about the bands and all of that. Yeah. But to see these young people being a part of that, I think that's pretty good. You know, we also, Fred, thing... talk about what this means for the city of Memphis as a whole. But what about for the two schools themselves, uh, Tennessee State and Jackson State? What does this mean to them to be here in Memphis, Tennessee and in the Liberty Bowl? It's a really big deal because you're talking nationally. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're taking it out of the region. And we, the schools have earned, participating schools have earned more than $12 million during the time of the class. Wow. So it's a, it's, that's part of it is big, but to bring everybody together that's a real good thing for the alumni and every and all their supporters. You know, one thing is always the same every year, year in, year out, the Tigers win. Yeah, the Tigers always win. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell, Fred, you are worked up. You are ready for the big game, as we are, too. So, as always, thank you very much, and congratulations for all that you do. Always yeah, thank you, you very much. Yeah, very thank you, Fred. Cool. All right. I tell you, it's a big, epic event. That it is, year after year after year. We'll have more with Fred a little bit later in the show, but now let's see how these HBCUs are preparing for the Southern Heritage Classic. Simone Woolrich is in Jackson, Mississippi with the sonic boom of the South in D.C. Ah, uh, but first up, Jarita Patterson. We sent her to Nashville, which of course is home of the Grand Ole Opry, but more importantly, Tennessee State University, where the aristocrat of bands, sophisticated ladies, and Fantastic Four are polishing their acts for the big showdown. Now. This is kind of a professional secret, but Jarita, I bet you did not know those ladies got their moves from me. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? That's just a little <laughs> taste. Let's see what Jarita has. <laughs> Mary Beth, I've seen you move, so you definitely have some bragging rights. 
to everyone. Welcome, welcome to Tennessee State University in my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. We want you to see what the incredible, the illustrious D D D D S S S S U Tigers have going on. We want you to feel the excitement. We want you to see it. Let's go. Rich in legacy, even richer in sound. We're talking about the TSU aristocrat of bands. Weeks before the Southern Heritage Classic and practice is already underway. These students are perfecting their craft from sunup to sundown, mastering a technique that's best described as music in motion. Perfectly polished instruments, 90 degree high marching coupled with high energy. And that's only the beginning. <laughs> sound that demands your attention. Just when you think it can't get any better, it does with more fancy footwork, flying flags and dancers with a hair swinging style of their own. This really is one of the best spots in the house. The high stepping, the fantastic four, the sophisticated ladies, one of the best bands in the land. I want you to see for yourself. And when it's all said and done, the only thing left to do is to take a bow for a job well done. Okay, here's the deal. I am a former majorette, but a really a forever dancer. Simone, I know you're at Jackson State. However, I had the chance to spend my time on the campus of TSU. We're gonna show you, Simone, and those other millennials, how Mary Beth, myself, and these sophisticated ladies, what they are brewing up. Ladies? Five, six. Seven, eight. Okay, so as I go to get some oxygen, I'm gonna send things to my colleague, Simone, who is at Jackson State. But first, there's a very important question. And that is, hey. are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for a T-S-U? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Drita, did you say something? Are you ready for a T-S-U? SU. I think I heard Are a little bit of what you said. I think Are you said you something about TSU. Are you ready for T Blah, blah, blah. I used to be a dancer. Something like that. Listen, whatever. Forget what she's talking about. Jackson State is where it's at. And you see, I don't need all those shenanigans Dorita had. I'm on an empty field. It's just me. You know why? Because our team has been putting in that work. And you know what? I don't need to keep talking. Why am I talking? Y'all just listen. Son, boom. When you hear these footsteps, you know, it's about to go down. The tiger runner, the fast shuffle, the high knee lift, the swing and sway. Sound good to me. I wish I could get up and boom, boom with it. <laughs> oh, Miss Geneva, you just wait. I'm sure you can hang with this crew. Especially the legendary prancing J sets. So come on, I'll call with it now. A feeling of family, a feeling of togetherness. One band, a whole lot of sweat, and one sound. When we're on the field, good luck. The sonic boom is the perfect welcome home music to the Southern Heritage Classic reunion for quite a few people on this team. To do it in my hometown, it was just, it just felt different. It's nothing like playing in your home or at your home, whatever arena or whatever. And it's nothing like playing in a band that you were just a couple of years ago on the outside looking in. These kids actually go through a lot and they have to be very tough and they have to be built tough in order to do what we do out there on the field. I'm very stern, you know, I, I have to hold the students to a very high standard because, I mean, we're the sonic boom of the South. See, I told y'all, I didn't even have to talk much. You heard it right there. Jackson State does it better, and you better believe that they are ready for September 14th. So forget what Dorita is talking about. Alex Mary Beth, here's my mic drop. Wait, I might need this later. 
Well, it's been said that love can conquer all except on game day. Right now, you want to meet a Memphis couple who met 28 years ago. One is a diehard JSU fan. The husband, of course, is a diehard TSU fan. You know who the counselor is? Janae Lewis talks with the couple whose house is totally divided during Classic Weekend. For the Herring family in Whitehaven, this is more than just a game, guys. This will determine who has the bragging rights for the next year in this house divided. After 20 plus years of marriage, Ruby and Larry Herring are on one accord about pretty much everything. That is, until football season comes around. He's definitely my rival. It, it can be good, it can be bad. <laughs> it's always great when we win, but it's always bad when we lose. The Southern Heritage Classic featuring Jackson State University and Tennessee State University puts these two alums on opposing sides. The couple has made this an annual outing for 30 years strong. In fact, we caught up with them back in 1997. We do brag. We, we believe in bragging because we know we're good, so why not? 22 years later and not much has changed. The school pride remains strong for both, and so does the trash talk. I think he's the bigger trash I just talker. Let, he does it subtle, you know, like... Let our record... That's it. See, he does it subtle. Let our record... Record reflect. Reflect. Just one of the many debates among this couple ahead of the Classic Weekend. Tennessee State has won more games than Jackson State. Oh. And it's more of battle of the band. I don't know why they say battle of the band. It's not really a battle. You know, it's an automatic we win. That, that part of the game. These days, it's not just about winning, but creating memories and exposing their grandkids to HBCUs at an early age. It's a family affair now, so we look forward to it in terms of going to the game and sharing our schools with our grandkids and kids. It's great. As they prepare to tailgate, catch up with old friends, and show off their school spirit, there's one decision not up for debate. I paid for the tickets, but I get on the Jackson State side in order to keep the peace in the family. Now, Larry says if Jackson State pulls it off, he will not be the one buying the tickets next year. Reporting in Whitehaven, Janae Lewis, WREG News Channel 3. And there is plenty more still to come tonight. Yeah, when we come back, Jarita Patterson is back from Nashville and joins us from Tiger Lane, where things are already heating up days before the big game. the weather is hot. Take a look at this. Okay, so I'm actually back from Nashville now, right here on Tiger Lane. We showed you what's going on in Nashville and Jackson ahead of the game, but this, folks, is where a lot of the action is actually happening. Tailgating, it uh, gets taken to a whole new level. Tailgating really is a trigger point for a lot of folks. 500 spots were sold this week. I want to introduce you to somebody very special, Miss Neva McGruder. Describe to me your group. Describe to me the efforts that go into all of this. This is a great combination of teams from all over the United States to salute the Southern Heritage Classic. You'll see the girls on TV battling and having fun, but this is another way to show them with great showmanship, bringing it together in the spirit of unity. We'll be together for the parade. We'll be together for the pregame. This year is 30 years of excellence, and we are so excited to be a part. Okay, it's all I can do. It's all you get from me. But take a look. These are the real stars. Keep in mind, this is just a preview of what's going to take place all weekend. We have so, so much more. Okay, so if you thought the dance girls were bringing the heat, we are now bringing the fire. Take a look at these beauties. So I'm joined by Mr. Bobby Broyles. You are the president of the Bill Street Corvette Association. Yes, correct. Thank you for yes. joining us. Tell pleasure. me, uh, this is something you said you do each and every year. That's Why correct. is that? Well, basically because we want to give back to the community. You were saying that this takes several associations and clubs coming together. Oh, absolutely correct. Um, again, I'm with Bill Street Corvette. Yeah. You got Joy, which is a River City. Uh, you got D, which is with uh, Real Deal, as well as you got Bobby, which was Collier Bill. So we are, it's kind of collective effort. We've been a member of it for 15 years or longer. Yeah. And um, we still get excited. Yeah. Every time we do it, we get excited. We want to do it. Yeah. Uh, so um, we just enjoy it. Thank Simple. you. Thank you so much. No Again, they're styling and profiling, but it really is for a good cause, as you heard. Okay, so a lot of action out here, but there's even more inside the Liberty Bowl. I am going to toss things to my colleague, Mary Beth and Alex, who are inside. 
Just about six miles up the street is a small restaurant with a huge flavor. It's none other than Cozy Corner, famous everywhere for its ribs and its Cornish hens. And his owner is no stranger to the Southern Heritage Classic. Years ago, he was on this field performing during uh, the halftime game. Now he's actually running the place. At the corner of North Parkway and Manassas, barbecue connoisseurs come in droves to stand in line in one place. Best barbecue place in the I've tried them all. That place is Cozy Corner Restaurant, where the aroma is intoxicating. In the kitchen, it's a culinary work of art. Just slide open the door to the smoker and pit, and you'll see slab after slab of ribs being cooked to perfection. Die-hard carnivores or meat lovers also crave desserts, sandwiches, Cornish chins, and all things barbecue. Because it's so tender, it's just like falling off the bone. So you, so you got to clean it. I'm going to clean this bone. While customers chew on the queue and slowly soak up and savor the sauce using white bread. Gosh, it's delicious. <laughs> Bread just the way it is, or do just, you put it in the sauce, or what? Tell if me. it happens to get in the sauce, you're not mad. Then I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> no Cozy Corners Bobby Brantley Jr. makes the rounds, turning up the heat, not just in the kitchen, but with customers about the Southern Heritage Classic. I'm a JSU cousin. My cousin used to come here for that. Oh, Texas really? Day. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were a hater. As he feeds the souls of customers, He's also stirring their souls with a heavy helping of friendly trash talking about Tennessee State versus Jackson State. I'm gonna drag you to the yes. game this year then. <laughs> with me. Oh, so you can get the experience oh, from the right the side. This is gonna be yeah. bad. Back in the day, Bobby Brantley Jr. was marching to the beat of the TSU Aristocrats of Band drumline. He was a percussionist. His family was so into seeing him perform, they would actually close this bustling barbecue business early on the day of the classic. They would shut it down. Well, you know how mothers are. They want to see their babies. Uh, they want to see their babies uh, perform. He says his mother would shut down the restaurant just to see him on the drums performing and marching in precision with the TSU band. Some people don't have anything to do on Saturday. Yeah, I'll come see you, son. But to actually shut the business down and, and to show that it, that it meant so much for her to see or for them to see me um, perform, it's, it's a great feeling. It's an amazing feeling. An amazing feeling, but who's really got the better band, TSU or the JSU sonic boom of the South? Bobby's answer might not surprise you. Tennessee State is better. Uh, the aristocratic bands. Uh, I got I to roll with my home team. As for these days, Bobby Bradley Jr. says he keeps Cozy Corner open on game day, but he admits on September 14th, you'll find him in one place. That's at the Liberty Bowl because much like his barbecue, this game always has the right recipe to be a classic, a Southern Heritage classic. This is my time to go see my school and to go see, go see the game, go catch up with people. We showed you the bands, we've showed you the teams, we've shown you the tailgating, but how did we get to today's current Southern Heritage Classic? Stephanie Skurlock has the 411 on the Classic in the 901. If Fred Jones had his way years ago, the Southern Heritage Classic would have been centered around a music festival instead of a football game. But he could never get that idea to work out. So out of one failed idea, a greater one was born. He started with the, with, the, with the football game. and My idea was to put something around the football game, but it is kind of kind of taken off. Fred Jones, founder of the Southern Heritage Classic, tells us the classic is now more about what happens on and off the football field. There are multiple concerts, a fashion show, a golf tournament, parade, and a college fair. But at the beginning, Jones describes a doubt from sports fans. They would say, this is not just a football game. You know, it's, if it wasn't for the entertainment, it wasn't for all of that, then people would not be involved. Well, guess what? Everything today is entertainment. 
Jones honed his event planning skills while working on the road with Isaac Hayes, who was a regular customer at the bank where Jones was an assistant manager. Shaft broke big in 71 and said, you know, we're going on tour, we need somebody to count money. <laughs> this was a special moment. He worked as a road manager and promoter. That background helped shape what we know today as a Southern Heritage Classic. Put a plan together and then execute that plan. And I think that's the reason why we were able to get started and that's the reason why we're celebrating 30 years. The Classic faced a major obstacle when it was forced to share its big day with the University of Memphis football team leading to a doubleheader at the Liberty Bowl, a logistical nightmare. The Memphis Tigers played Mississippi State in the afternoon. Jackson State and Tennessee State had to wait until that night upsetting many classic fans, including his mother. I went to see her, and, and, and you know, she was cooking, and, and she was, she just got real emotional. She said, we only want to play one day, and they want to take it from us. Us. Jones says that's what's special about the classic. It doesn't belong to one person. It belongs to the longtime community supporters. The love for the classic was evident again last year when an impending storm forced Jones to cancel the big game minutes before kickoff. The only thing you hear people talking about now is that, man, I hope they don't rain on our game this year. On our game. On our event. Jones is praying for better weather this year. There's now a contractual agreement in place preventing doubleheaders, and the football game is now secured through 2024. Somebody might want to ask, well, how long are you going to do it? Well, you know what? I, I never would have thought I'd been doing it this long. But I got 375,000 miles on my car. <laughs> I never thought I was going to be driving it that long. Jones's son helps him run the Classic, and about 30 of his staff members have been with him all 30 years. Jones credits the success of the Southern Heritage Classic to a team effort. Not the one that actually plays ball, but the team that keeps the ball rolling. Alex, Mary Beth? Now, AC, we've covered an awful lot of ground on everything behind the scenes of the big Classic weekend, but what about the game? There is the game. Believe it or not, Mike Sadie and Megan Rice are back in the studio to show us how these two rivals are shaping up so far this year. Mary Beth and Alex, these two teams have been going at it since 1990 and every year since 1994. They're both Tigers and they both don't particularly like each other. Megan, that makes for a great rivalry. Absolutely, that's right, Mike. And with Memphis pretty much in the middle of both Jackson and Nashville, this is the one game both fan bases circle on the calendar. Matter of fact, both teams do. Yeah, but the problem for Jackson State, though, this rivalry has been dominated by TSU recently. They've won six in a row and 13 of the last 15, though head coach Rod Reed knows winning in this rivalry game a lot harder than those numbers might indicate. Every time we play, we know it's going to be a dogfight. And, and I can remember, you know, there was a stretch there for about four or five years where it came down to the last play of the game. So uh, there's no love loss between the two universities. There's no love loss between the fans, and it's going to be a great electric atmosphere. It's always an exciting game, and hopefully we'll create most of the excitement. Jackson State has turned to first-year head coach John Hendrick to lead them to their first win in Memphis since 2011. While this will be Hendrick's first classic as head coach, he's all too familiar with the game, serving as Jackson State's defensive coordinator each of the last three years. Always going to be a tough game. You know, Tennessee State and Jackson State is a, a rivalry, and Tennessee State has gotten the best of Jackson State over the past six or seven years. And, uh, you know, I, I know that our players will be looking forward to playing it at Tennessee State. It's a rivalry game. You know, we want to beat Tennessee State. They want to beat us. So it's, it, it'll be exciting to be up there and have an opportunity to play against them. Jackson State is so ready, Mike, that their mascot, that's right, their mascot got a personal foul in their season opener. That is dedication. I saw that. It was crazy. So it's Jackson State and Tennessee State in the Southern Heritage Classic, Saturday at 6 from the Liberty Bowl. Don't miss it. And I do have one guarantee, Megan. What you got? The Tigers will win.
Okay, hours before the coin is tossed, thousands line up on Park Avenue for the classic parade. And that's where high school bands, excellent themselves, get a chance to strut their stuff. And this year's Grand Marshal is the legendary and now Hall of Famer Bev Johnson of WDIA. The parade starts at 9 o'clock Saturday. Here's what you need to know if you plan to come to the game. Gates open bright and early at 8 a.m. About 50,000 people will pack Tiger Lane and the Liberty Bowl on Saturday. And the game, the game itself, kicks off at 6 p.m. And you cannot miss the halftime show or the classic fifth quarter as it's called for the battle of the bands in BC. Hey, that's why they call this the classic weekend. And before game day comes the classic concert. None other than Gladys Knight and Jeffrey Osborne bring soul to the Orpheum Theater. And as if that's not enough for you, Friday night the classic music festival brings Keith Sweat, Joe, and Tamia bringing the rhythm and the blues to DeSoto County at the Lander Center. So as you can tell, once again, this game will be a classic. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we'll see you right here Saturday for the Southern Heritage Classic.